It's a, yeah, Luca from University of Leeds in UK. He will talk about geological significance and the source to sink controls on the, you know, uh, plastic para sequences, focus on the coniform, the delta sequence stratigraphy. And so uh, also next week, as always, we also have two more talks. Uh, Philip from Netherlands, he will talk about the global, the delta, the current study and understanding of the subsidence of uh, folks on particularly South Asia uh, river delta systems. And Robert Eller, as we all know him, Bob Eller, he will talk about the tropical deltas, particularly focused on the carbon processing and uh, remineralization. So I think uh, once again, two more very good talk this coming, this coming Friday and the next week. So now Professor Liu, is uh, we know is uh, also a director of the Institute of, Institute of Earth Environment in China Academy of Science in Xi'an. Uh, he graduated from Nanjing University, a very famous university in terms of geoscience study. And then he, get, he got his PhD from the Chinese Academy of, uh, Academy of Science, so previous uh, the Lewis Institute, a research institute. Uh, he is very active, particularly uh, in the recent years, study the East Asia monsoon system and use the technology from the tree ring isotope. He published more than 200 uh, SI papers and uh, is an uh, editor and contribute uh, in PNAS, Nature Communication, G, uh, JGR, and many world uh, prestige uh, journals. So today, you know, we are looking forward to his talk about uh, the Yellow River, the Les Plateau, the climate environment change, how this impact of the Yellow River runoff and the sediment discharge. So Professor Liu, now is uh, please share your screen and the presentation mode. Is okay, Paul? Yeah, that's very good. Okay. First of all, uh, good morning for American colleagues and also good evening for Chinese colleagues. Uh, today, I'm uh, so happy to have this opportunity. Uh, Professor Jane Paul Liu gave me this uh, extraordinary opportunity to share my recent work with us, uh, with all of our audience. So I guess many of you know that there is a, a Lurus Plateau in central China. This is about 0 0.6 million kilometers square, which is one of the most important regions of Chinese civilization, such as uh, the D1 culture, that's about 8,000 to 5,000 BP, and the Banpo culture, about 7,000 to 6,000 BP. And even today, more than 100 million people live in this region, the Lourdes Plateau. So the Lourdes Plateau is the most important sand on the water sources of the Yellow River. So this is a three typical geography of the Yellow River. We call that the Yuan Liang Mo. And also on the north of the Lourdes Plateau, husbandry is a very important economy uh, like this uh, shepherd, uh, uh, he's just fed, fed the ships. So this is uh, called Yuan, that actually is a flat high land. And this is called the Liang, the Lurus Ridge. And this is called the Mao, Lurus Hill. On the Lurus Plateau, you can see many, many Lurus Paleosol sequences. This is a sections, you can see a lot. So this is a great records for paleoclimater for paleoclimater variation in the past uh, ten thousand to three million years. It's good for uh, global change study. And the basic characteristics of this plateau is that uh, low precipitation, complex uh, topography, 
on the real vegetation on the weak soil structures. So on this plateau, it's a serious soil erosion on the fragile eco environment. And uh, as I mentioned, this plateau is very important for Chinese civilization because the first Chinese ancestor, we called him Huang Di, was from the Chinese nation here. He is thought to have lived for about 5,000 years ago. And we Chinese call ourselves as descendants of Huang Di and Yan Di. So in each of the dynasties for Chinese, uh, almost uh, many, many uh, emperors, they go to this muslin, Huang Di's muslin to worship. This is uh, this picture is a Huang Di muslin and uh, his tomb. And also on the Lost Plateau, there is a very famous city called Xi'an. That's my hometown. I'm talking this talk in Xi'an right now. The Xi'an once was the world's largest city in the Tang Dynasty, about one, uh, about uh, 1,300 years ago. That time, the population is more than one million. It's also, uh, uh, it's also with the dynasty, uh, 13 dynasties selected as a capital. So it's for a long time, including the great Qin on the Han dynasties and also the Tang dynasty. Everybody knows these are some pictures about nowadays Xi'an, uh, especially the Terracotta Museum, Terracotta Warriors, these were famous. And on the Lush Plateau, there is a big river that's called the Yellow River. It's about more than 5,000 kilometers long. And it's also well known for being the most sediment laden river and having largest vertical drop over it. It arranges from Balakala, Bayankala mountains on the Tibetan Plateau, flows through the Lurs Plateau and into the sea. During a high water period, the sediments load amounts to nearly about 0.3 million tons per year. This huge volume of salt are carried into the river by erosion process in the Lurs region. So we go to our subject. Today, I'm going to talk about recent anthropogenic curtailing of Yellow River runoff on the sediments load is unprecedented over the past 500 years. I'm going to give my talk in the four parts. First, Yellow River, a brief introduction, then our reconstruction, then introduce the recent anthropogenic curtailing of runoff and the sediments load. Then we go to conclusions. So this is the Yellow River. This is the eye bird from airplane. Historically, the Yellow River always a bridge. That means the flu outside the channel. And uh, but the recently, uh, recent decades is cut off low flow or even no flow, mainly in the middle on the lower Yellow River basins. Uh, you know, the bridge always results in the considerable losses on the people's lives and the properties. So it is the major responsibility for every dynasty of governments in the history, they efficiently to manage the river late, uh, Yellow River flood. All governments have set up special institutions or units to study or control the Yellow River. As we found that the first people to, uh, to manage the river, uh, Yellow River is Da Yu. This is his statue. And uh, after 1949, People's Republic government established a, a very big committee called the Yellow River Committee to manage the, uh, the Yellow River. Although the Yellow River accounts for only 3% of the Chinese water resource, but it irrigates 13% of the Chinese crop lines, especially in the Ningxia and the Inner Mongolia province. 
Since the start of anthrop Anthropocene, uh, about in 1960s, uh, increasing number of uh, large scale dams and uh, reservoirs have been built in the main channel of the river, Yellow River. Besides, water consumption by the agricultural irrigation along the Yellow River middle course has risen sharply. Human activities have ultimately and uh, irreversibly uh, in, in changed the Yellow River natural characteristics. Low flow events have occurred frequently in recent decades, and there was even no water flow for several months each year in a lower Yellow River course during 1995 to 1998. So you can see more on the more a huge large scale dams was, uh, has been built in the main channel. The first one is Simon, Simon Shah Gorge Station. It's, uh, 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 it was built in 1960s and then Liu Jia Xia, Qing Tong Xia. Even in 1986, the highest called Longyang Gorge, 175 meters high, the highest in the Asia, it's a big, very large scale. So the urgent issue in the Yellow River study now is about the four problems, or four issues. First is uh, what is the record of the Yellow River stream flow before observation time period? And how does current run now compare to long-term stream flow variability? The second is how much water has been consumed by human activities. The third one is why has the Yellow River become clearer recently than ever? Finally, why the sentiments load has decreased so greatly? So the, all these questions are uh, the people urged to know to manage the Yellow River and uh, also for engineering uh, problem. To answer these questions, it is necessary to reconstruct a natural runoff, that's called theoretically runoff of the Yellow River in the past 100 years. So here we're using Tririn because it's a high resolution uh, proxy of Yellow River indicator. Annual resolved Tririn based paleohydrological reconstruction often could reflect a natural runoff variability. Also provides long time series and uh, present a border of extremes than observational uh, records. Trillion data have therefore been used to reconstruct the middle range of Yellow River runoff variation for the past five centuries. So the second part is runoff reconstruction. Uh, generally, there are four uh, uh, hydrological signals contained in trillions. First, everybody knows that the precipitation, we can reconstruct the annual or seasonal precipitation using trillions. And then drop index like PDSI and something. And also snow water equivalent. Then the runoff, the hydrological year or seasonal. So these variables are close related in Chinese Los Plateau and its surrounding areas. That means if the trading wealth is highly correlated with one of these variables, it is often significantly correlated with other, others. Okay, theoretically, tree growth on the river runoff are controlled by the same precipitation and the transpiration. Precipitation affects tree growth and uh, replenish river runoff. Thus, tree is a powerful tool for directly reconstructing precipitation and indirectly reconstructing runoff. But we have a precondition that during the modeling condition is that uh, no human disturbance, that means no dam to disturb the natural runoff. To do this work, 
uh, we selected uh, 52 sites in the middle range of a Yellow River Basin. Uh, we did our best, uh, maximum efforts to, to take the treasure samples. We almost uh, went to all the sites which have a long triggering, uh, a long triggering, triggering chronologies. So totally, we 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 collected about uh, three thousand trees. Some 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 sites like these big dots. I mean, it's the tree is sensitive, not for precipitation, not for hydrological circulation, but for temperature. In this study. In our goal, we, we, we want to try the, uh, we want to reconstruct the, the precipitation related uh, variables. So we finally choose 31 treatment sites. Those are sensitive, very sensitive to hydrological variation like precipitation. We selected, it, uh, selected this in our uh, run of reconstruction. This is the final chronology which we use in our final composite. So here is the Simon Chia State Station, Gorge Station. All the observation data of runoff come from this station. Unfortunately, the records from this station was begun in 1990 and uh, ended in 1960, just before Simon Chia State uh, Gorge built so we have we have enough data to make the model and to do calibration on the verification so these pictures will show you some uh, sampling picture uh, those trees growth on the lowest plateau some even in the very very dangerous cliff like this and this sometimes quite dangerous this is a core we're taken from the tree. You can see the core like this. And after polish the surface, finally we got this. You can see the boundary quite clear. And we're counting on the marine marine width under the binocular and the microscope and the microscopes. So totally we have uh, 31 trillion chronologies over the middle and the upper reach. This is the information for each chronology. So you can see each chronology are quite correlated or significantly correlated with the Simon Jia runoff, like 0 0.71, 0 0.73, they are all good. It looks very good to do a few of the research. So this is a diagram, uh, diagrams of uh, each of uh, 31 triggering chronologies. Some short, some long, more short and long. Uh, they, they, could flag, uh, they could reflect the same common signals like this. Very dry period, like very dry period, very dry period. Dry period means less precipitation and also Low runoff, more like this, which one from the different mountains, different range. So for all those uh, chronologies, we use nasty the principal component reconstruction method. This is the formula of this. Then we got uh, we, we we got uh, uh, the final composite chronology. During, during the calibration of the verification uh, period. This is the, uh, the, uh, the composite chronology, uh, the correlation between the chronology and the observation hydrological data, starting from 1920 to 1960. After 60, the data cannot be used for the calibration because uh, the Samisha stage, the Samisha Dam was built in 1961. So after that year, the runoff was disturbed by human activity. Uh, activity. So cannot be uh, cannot be used for calibration or verification anymore. So 
during the calibration period, the, uh, the relationship is uh, 0 0.76. The explained variance is uh, 58%. It's pretty high in the dendritic cardiology research. So statistical items in this, in this uh, uh, table, I will show that the reconstruction model is very robust and reliable. Especially we have this high reduction error and the CE value. Generally, it's not easy to pass through this to, to data. So this is a, a comparison between observation data and the reconstruction uh, comparison. So this side is our regional series. And this is the first difference. That means the children data could capture the variation of our regional data because it's a wide coverage. So large sample size, the high correlation on the reliable statistical parameters this curve or uh, the, uh, our uh, reconstruction, we believe has become the most accurate and reliable annual runoff records in the middle range of Yellow River so far. You can see the comparison. This part hidden in the blue cannot be used. It's just a reference because just as I mentioned before, human disturbance uh, happened more, occurred more after this time period. So this uh, is the entire reconstruction from uh, 1492 to 2013 AD. Uh, the blue line is observation and the, the right one is a theoretical calculation by using the children data. You can see this area, this, uh, in this uh, area, that means extremely low Randolph. And here is extreme high runoff. Here is a higher, lower. And be, between them, this part is uh, normal. Most of the time, Yellow River runoff are in the normal situation, but these are higher, higher. So historically, this year could be the highest. Uh, this year could be the lowest. Uh, this is uh, the mean, about 500 years mean. Uh, it's about uh, it's about uh, forty billion tons per year, and uh, during the eighteenth century, it was the lowest natural runoff. It's lower than the average of the five hundred years mean. And here you can see naturally it's uh, the lowest. The period from nineteen twenty six to nineteen thirty two. So actually, at that time the the most dry period over the past 500 years in the North China. So a million millions of people died because of uh, famine and no food supply because of drought and the crops no harvest. After this uh, disaster dry period, the runoff recovered to its peak uh, with this volume pretty high. But after 1940, it has been significantly decreased. You can see this trend very obvious. So we can, uh, we first uh, could think these uh, very, very low runoff could be used as the benchmark for the Yellow River water uh, in the allocation. Uh, but actually in the later years, in the past decades, three decades or four decades. People did not follow this rule. Uh, then the provinces like Ningxia, Neimo, and Shanxi, Henan, Shandong. They all, uh, the water they used uh, more than uh, its allocation. People do not obey this, uh, this benchmark. Since uh, 1980, the observed runoff has been greatly lower, greatly lower, almost every year lower than this benchmark, when the natural, lower than the natural range.
and even no flow, no st steam flow in the uh, in the lower reach during 1995 to 1998. Our reconstruction also could be uh, uh, could be identified by some uh, historical uh, historical documents. In, in China, we have many, many, or we have abundant historical uh, documents, historical records. So this, uh, this could help us to, uh, to verify our reconstruction. We found some uh, uh, extremely, extremely high flu years and uh, some uh, extremely, extremely uh, lower flu years like this. Uh, some uh, branch, branches of the Yellow River, like Fenhe, Fenhe and the Weihe River was uh, dried, no water. And the 1928, which is mentioned that many rivers, many branches were cut off, such as the Jinghe and the Weihe River. Horses and uh, carriers could travel across the river, across the bottom of the river. So. This is good. These are good evidence for our uh, reconstruction. Here I show you some percentage of extremely high or extremely low or high, low or normal years percentage. So, in the entire reconstruction, we see that uh, uh, the normal years uh, are more uh, in the most of the part. It's fifty percent, fifty-three percent years are normal. Only 5.5 year percent of years are extremely low. This is in a total from uh, uh, 1492 to 1960 before the Samingxia stage. Okay, but one we say after 1961, the Samingxia station was built. You can see this portion, the percentage changed during 1961 to 2013 the extreme low year from a uh, sharp, sharply increase from uh, seven percent to 60 percent that's mean more than half a years are dry are uh, in the extremely low flu condition and the even worse during 1987 to 2013, the extreme low flu increased from 11% to 19, 19, 92%, pretty much. And we can, we, there is no extreme high flu years, no high flu years. Almost all are extremely low. So one way to some uh, periodicity analysis, uh, it shows uh, for the entire uh, in instruction, uh, reconstruction, 24 years are very obvious, very obvious. So this is a weaver let transform. weaver let tell us something. The periodicity starting from the beginning to the end of now, uh, to the end of 20, uh, 2000 years, it's a uh, decrease, change the short from uh, about uh, so 40, 40, 80 years to 24 years, 80, 80 years. And then now to nowadays, it disappeared. So recent years, no, no, uh, uh, no quasi periodicities at all. So why? This phenomenon uh, produced because the anthropogenic influence. Actually, human activity influenced uh, uh, the Yellow River runoff through two aspects. First, anthropogenic air source caused the recent pronounced weakening of Asia Summerman Zone. As the Yellow River Committee studied, 54% of runoff in the Samanxia area is supplied by the precipitation on the Lurs Plateau, which is mainly bought by the Asia Summer Main Zone. So the strength of our uh, Summer Main Zone determines the amount of precipitation and then determines the runoff 
of Saminsha Station, Saminsha Gorge Station. So why does the runoff in the middle ranges decrease after 1940? So there are two reasons, very close and also related to human activities. This is a study, uh, this study has uh, published in the GRL last year. And uh, we also use uh, 10 trillion, uh, trillion current knowledge from the Earth's plateau to reconstruct the Asia main zone related precipitation. We found that air, uh, human aerosol emission influenced uh, Asia main zone uh, precipitation to a certain extent, uh, like this. If we, uh, if we, uh, we, 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 we use the climate coupling model and this analysis was uh, done in Australia. If we consider all the forces, but without the anthropogenic air source, Asian main zone should be increased, enhanced, like here, the right one, the precipitation should be increased. But actually, children tell us the precipitation decrease. So why? After the simulation, when we put all the uh, forcing and uh, put also a whole, uh, the forcing and also add the human emission, like SO2 emission. So the sharply precipitation decrease. Since 1940, the monsoon precipitation has decreased by 0.68 millimeter per year on the total precipitation reduction in the Western Lewis Plateau is about 55 millimeters by 2013. So pre precipitation decrease is certainly cause the runoff decrease. However, if no extensive use of water by human activity, the runoff will never be as small as actually observed. During 1991 to 2000, uh, 2013, the violent increase of water consumption by human activity led to significant decrease in correlation between runoff and the monsoon precipitation. For example, during this period, the correlation between the uh, between the precipitation and the runoff is 0 0.72 but at this time in this time span decreased to 0 0.25 almost a no correlation here this uh, diagram show that uh, the relationship between reconstructed precipitation and the natural runoff they are highly correlated to about 0 0.86 for last uh, more than 40 year, uh, 400 years. So we can see that uh, this is a uh, theoretical trend of the trend. And uh, this, the blue line is a trend of actually observed runoff. There is a big difference between these two records or these two runoffs. Where is the water, where the water did, did go? Since the staff uh, uh, of the Anthropocene in 1960s, uh, an increasing number of large scale dams and the reservoirs have been built in the main Yellow River Channel, as we mentioned before. So in addition to this, water consumption by agricultural irrigation along the Yellow River especially in the middle course like Ningxia province and the name, name Inner Mongolia has risen sharply. Low flu uh, events have occurred frequently in recent decades. And there was even no water flu for several months each year in, in, in the Shandong province studying uh, during 1995 to 1998. This is a comparison of uh, theoretical runoff and uh, actually observed runoff.
since the Longyang Xia was built in 1986, so we can see the uh, 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 we use the uh, uh, theoretical Randolph to to minus the observe, uh, uh, observed uh, Randolph series. We got this one. We think this one is uh, the, the deficit or recharge for yellow river water. In, in other words, it's partially is uh, human activity, uh, water consumption by human activities. We can see the human activity use related water increased obviously. This is a year by year. So we can find we find a significant and um, a negative correlation between human activity used water and uh, observed runoff like this. It's a minus 0 0.82. But during 1968 to 2040, it's a little bit higher and expand the variance also higher. This results show that uh, human activity used water is the main reason for the sharp decrease of the Yellow River runoff. Right now, you can see the runoff. Right uh, human activity use uh, water increased uh, very clearly. So, how much water people used? This is in Qingtongxia city. Only in this city, there are forty. There are forty irrigate uh, channel uh, in the city, like uh, like Qin uh, Qin channel, Han channel, Han Lai channel. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, four, uh, 14 channels. Many water was uh, used by, by the people to irrigate uh, the rice like this. So in Ningxia irrigated area rice is about eight, uh, 880 kilometers squares like this. And the inner Mongolia is about 6,000 kilometers squares of corn. So this uh, is the, uh, the relationship between Ningxia and the Inner Mongolia irrigation area and the human water, human activity use of water is about 0 0.66 during 1961 to 2013. And uh, this is for the, for the irrigation area, for output, for the crop output, include rice and the corn, a correlation like this high. That means totally 64% of water consumption by agricultural irrigation in the most recent two decades was consumed by Ningxia and the Inner Mongolia irrigation uh, uh, regions. This is uh, this is Ningxia rice, Ningxia rice. You can see it's a huge area in, in, in the province. Uh, because the water was used by the uh, upper provinces. So in the low provinces, like Shandong, you can see the days of a cutoff runoff, 1991, 82 days, uh, even to 1997, 226 days, no water. So you cannot imagine how it works. And uh, uh, there are very important turning points around 2000 years due to gradually decrease of air soil. So the air monsoon began to strain from the long-term weakening and uh, the monsoon enhanced precipitation gradually increased. So the natural observed runoff of uh, Yellow River began to increase too. This is uh, haze, the concentration of haze in the, uh, in, uh, on the Lewis Plateau. This is a PM20, uh, PM2.5. You can see uh, PM2.5 actually decreased for, in, the long, in the long run, in the long term. And meanwhile, the precipitation increased. They have the correlation like this number. So we don't need to worry too much because the precipitation now goes high. So the run now goes high both in the theoretical and the observed series. It's very obvious. So another big question in the Yellow River research is that uh, sediments, sediments or sand. 
sediments load. The Yellow River once carried the largest sediments load in the world, but in the recent decades, the load has decreased dramatically. There was a significant positive correlation between observed runoff and the sediment contents is about 0.68. On the Yellow River, there is a very famous waterfall. It's uh, called uh, Huko. Uh, this, uh, take, uh, this picture uh, was taken in 1980, 1980s. Uh, this was taken just uh, two years ago. You can see clearly now the water become clear. The sand, uh, the, the, the sediment load was uh, decreased uh, very obviously. So this sediment reduction endangers the downstream. For example, like Kaifeng City in the uh, in the Henan Province, and also the delta of the Yellow River in the Yellow Sea. Uh, this uh, about 10 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, the, the area of uh, Delta is quite large. But now you can see that the, the, the Delta is uh, become, uh, Delta becoming, uh, is becoming smaller than before. So when we, sorry. When we calculate the correlation between the Yellow River sediment load and the human, uh, the human used water, we found this relationship in the Samenxia Gorge Station. The relationship between them is zero, minus, is negative, 0 0.454. But in the Toudao Guai Station, the upper, uh, a little bit upper, it's uh, quite high. That means 58% uh, of, uh, of a reduction of sediment load in the upper reach and 29% in the middle reach was related to the human used water. The decreasing runoff on the water volume weakened hydro, uh, hydrodynamic forcing, uh, forces and uh, thereby uh, the capacity, ca uh, capacity of the sediment transportation and the enhanced sediment deposition. This factor reduced the sediment load and the clarify, uh, cl uh, clarified the water in the Yellow River mine channel. So in addition, because in the 2000, uh, around 2000 years, governments sponsored measures such as uh, uh, construction of tens of thousands of uh, check dams, soil and water conservation and, uh, uh, and uh, on the Lurus Plateau. This also has a kind of a contribution to, re uh, to re reduction of uh, Yellow River sediments load. Okay, now we go uh, we go uh, we go to conclusions. Uh, in this study, uh, prior to anthropogenic uh, interfaces that started in 1960s, the lowest natural runoff over the past 500 year occurred during 1926 to 1932. And that's uh, also a very drought period. And uh, we think this could be served as a benchmark for, for future uh, planning of the Yellow River water uh, allocation. Uh, since later 1980, uh, the low observed Yellow River runoff has exceeded the natural range of runoff variability a consequence of a combination of decreasing precipitation and increasing water consumption by direct and indirect human activities, particular agriculture irrigation. So this reduced runoff has resulted in uh, estimated about 58% of a reduction of sediments load in the upper range of the Yellow River and a 29% reduction in the middle range. Finally, we think if the human activity continue to intensify, future Yellow River runoff will be further reduced, and this will negatively impact agriculture, human lives, and the social economy development in the middle and the lower basin of the Yellow River. So to reduce the risk of uh, 
reoccurring cutoff for steam flow in a Yellow River low basin, water should be allocated uh, very, very carefully. So cautious policy can balance water allocation among the needs of agriculture, industry, and ecosystem. So from this point of view, our reconstructed uh, uh, our reconstruction are very important for future Yellow River water resource management. And also we think our results provide a valuable historical data set for Yellow River water management, as well as a uh, very important model for how to distinguish and quantify anthropogenic influence from the natural variability in global chain study. So that's my talk today. And this paper was published uh, in the panel in the PINAS recently. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Professor Liu, thank you. Thank you very much for giving this wonderful talk. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Professor Ho Jia Wang from Ocean University, he gave a talk about uh, 50 year scale, mainly the human impact, anthropogenic impact of the Yellow River discharge and the sediment uh, delivered to the ocean. But today, you know, based on the train rain isotope, you give uh, at least 500 year scale. That's wonderful. And uh, I think we have a couple of questions. First, um, Yuan Bing, uh, could you go ahead to uh, speak out your question? And what, Yuan Bing, where are you from? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, good. Okay, great. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Liu. Uh, I'm Bing Yuan from uh, Sun Yat-sen University or Zhongshan University. Okay. Uh, so, well, yeah, it's really interesting to me. And uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, could you uh, talk a bit more about the hidden connection between tree rain and uh, precipitation? precipitation in the reconstruction model. And the second one is how to determine if the tree rain is sensitive to precipitation and are the select trees the same species? Um, yeah, that's my question, thank you. Okay. So uh, I, I, first I answer your second question uh, about uh, the precipitation uh, reconstructed by using tree rains. You can refer my uh, published paper in GRL last year. There is uh, more detail about how to reconstruct uh, the precipitation on the Lost Plateau, because here I do not have uh, uh, I do not have the, the, the PPD available, so it's not easy now. You can see that uh, paper. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you. On the, the first question, could you please repeat that one? Um, so, because the, the part for the model, the model part is a bit quick for me. And so I would like to know a bit more about the, say, the hidden connection between tree range and precipitation in the model or the hidden mechanism in the model. Oh, uh, the, the, the model, yeah. The, the, the model that's the way we use that the principal com component uh, analysis to extract uh, uh, a final chronology. And we just use the very simple uh, relationship function, correlation function, okay. to analyze the precipitation monthly, seasonally, or even combination between different months. Land okay. calculation okay. and correlation could be based. And gave us some physiology explanation. That's the, the, the basic, fundamentally, uh, the basis. Learn to do the reconstruction. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the Professor Liu mentioned the paper in JDR last year. I put it on the chat. Uh, is the Professor, is that paper talk about uh, the Asia summer monsoon related relative hum humidity recorded in Trinity? The JGR, right? Yes. Okay, very good. So I have a, I have two small questions. So if other people, if we have any question, you can raise your hand or you can unmute yourself. But uh, let me, uh, before I'm reading other, other questions, I'm the question. So you, could you uh, screen share your PowerPoint that 500 years training data, you know, the very famous, the key 
uh, curve, you know. Okay. That, I that slide. So my question is, um, around 500 years ago, uh, 1500, 1500 uh, AD, did you see any signal from the Little Ice Age? I see there's also a very dry peak go down, just like the 1926 to 32. Professor, could you share your screen? I didn't see the share screen. Yeah, I, I, I did. Let me see. Uh, no, uh, did the show? No. no. <laughs> just share let, let me check that. Your PowerPoint. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Uh, let me do it. Okay. This one. Uh, not uh, yet coming. Okay. Yeah, coming. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So. For example, around uh, 1530, you know, uh, at that time, is this the signal from a uh, little ice age? C could we detect anything, you know, the little ice age? Uh, this is a very good question. Very good. Because everybody know little ice age could be starting from uh, 1590. Because 16 is the coldest, it's the strongest cold, it's the, the, the uh, very strong, uh, the strongest cold age, little, uh, little ice age. But for children, web study, it's not easy to capture low frequency signal. Mm. This, is big, this is a big problem for children research, especially for children web research. But for the children's step isotopes, it could be solved this question. So you cannot see the little s age here mm. very, very clear. Well, yeah, that's something, you know, maybe we need, because the little ice age is a couple hundred years event, a big event. And- uh, Even okay. longer, even yeah. longer. Some people think that maybe it's ended in, in 19, uh, 1900 or something. Yeah, something, yeah something. Okay, yeah. Uh, second, yeah. question, second question. We know uh, 2017, 2017, mm -hmm. the Yellow River uh, sediment is less than 10 million tons, only 7.7 .7 million tons in Lijian Station. But mm -hmm. suddenly, uh, 2018, the sediment jumped to go up to more than 100 million tons. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that caused by human uh, management uh, the reservoir or is it because more rainfall on the Yellow River Basin in 2018? Why suddenly increase the discharge and sediment to the leaching station? Uh, in terms of my theory, I think that's because of uh, increased precipitation in recent years and also uh, increased uh, runoff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. We have a question from David, da David mm. Grimley. So David, uh, would you please go ahead to speak out your question? Okay. Yeah. I wrote in the chat, but yeah, I was just curious on uh, the effect of the land use, you know, because you have the increased rainfall, but what about the effect of the agriculture and land use through time? How much of that, how much has that affected the sediment input into the river in addition to the dams? Uh, could you please repeat again? I cannot follow you. Okay, I'm curious about the effect of kind of agricultural practices or land use on the uh, sediment load over time. Mm -hmm. So actually the agriculture area enlarged recently, recent, recent decades is still enlarged. But in this case, uh, because the cropland in, enlarged, so the uh, water, uh, the, the water for peop, uh, people used are also increased. 
Yeah, I guess I don't, I don't mean the uh, water use agriculture, but sort of uh, um, practices with the land use as far as uh, erosion of the soil. Hmm. You mean erosion of soil is uh, less, it, it decreased? That could yeah. be because, the, you know, many, many check dams are built on the Lewis Plateau that, uh, you know, also decrease the, sa the sediments load to the Yellow River too. Yeah. Um, David, are you yeah. welcome to check the uh, Professor Hu Jia Wang, the S2S? Uh, number 10 uh, webinar so okay. on the YouTube, you can check that. And also a couple more paper published by our colleague from Beijing University, uh, Professor Ren's group and, uh, and the Tsinghua University, they talk about that, you know, the land cover and agriculture impact for the sediment discharge. So okay. I think Professor Liu today is mainly focused on the run of the climate, you know, how the precipitation from train rain data. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, very good. Is any other question? Okay. So I also have a question, Professor Liu. So mm -hmm. you see the change from the 1960s. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering, after we build a dam, the impound, impound, you know, the reservoir began to form a big reservoir. Is this rather work could it impact the local moisture around the around the upreach around the rather work portion? You know, is uh, the train ring can we can we reflect that kind of uh, moisture evaporation in the surrounding area? I, I don't know. I just this is the local regional impact, not the big impact. Uh, yeah, this uh, is an interesting question. It could be could be in uh, influence, but I do not do this research, so I don't know the answer. <laughs> this <is> sorry, <laughs> it could be interesting. You can send a master or PhD student to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, is uh, any any other question? Okay, even our Chinese colleague or student, if we want to ask anything, uh, you know, um, anything even in Chinese, that's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> if, if not, I think uh, we can maybe uh, stop here. And uh, so uh, uh, once again, um, this is a, a wonderful talk. I think uh, we can link the little bit longer term change of the Yellow River Basin to even look at the, in, the, uh, in the ocean, the sediment record. We can do a little bit comparison with uh, you know, your 500 year scale and with the Delta and all the Yellow Sea uh, sediment uh, study we, uh, we conducted. So this Friday, this coming Friday, uh, as I mentioned, Luke uh, from the University of Leeds, uh, he will talk about the sequence stratigraphy inside a Delta, uh, you know, that will be could be very interesting and